everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and today we are having some fun with some very easy pockets. I posted a picture of this type of pocket made with an envelope on my Instagram and I got a lot of requests uh, asking to show how I made this. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of this design and I'm going to show you how to make this sort of an image and also um, show you a couple different ways to do it. All right. It's very easy. Anybody can do it. And let me show you this first prototype. This is in my one of my mystery books here. So it's kind of a mystery theme. I juxtaposed it to this eco printed page that has a leaf on it. If you can see the leaf in there and uh, the colors are a little bit similar. Um, so let's just take a closer look. But basically it's an envelope. Very simple cut with some fancy scissors, some inking. I did some spray stencils and a little bit of blingage and I tucked in a piece of, I was going to use some stationery. So I would give uh, the recipient of this journal some extra writing space, but I thought, hey, I've got so much, um, I have so much, uh, a big collection of uh, designer scrap paper, and it's uh, about the same thickness as copy paper, maybe just a little bit thinner, and it's very similar to the weight of stationary paper. So I thought, why don't I cut down a bunch of those and use them as stationary in here? And the theme of the one that I put in here is a, some dried old leaves. And I thought that worked perfectly with this mystery woodland type journal. And I just uh, put a little sewn tab on the top. I actually sewed the tab separately and then glued it on. And I just did some pretty fancy edging on this. And I just stenciled the inside and put a little word. And so there it's all set to be written upon. So there you go. Very easy to make these little guys. And uh, uh, so with those requests, uh, your requests are being fulfilled. Here you go. All right. Close this one up and I'll show you another example. <coughs> oh, should have kept that one open so I could remember. <laughs> okay, there it is. All right, here we go. Example number two. Uh, this is another uh, mysterious woodland nature style journal that I'm working in. In this one, I have also... Uh, made some designs on the front with some uh, spray stencils, a little bit of uh, stickles used to draw and accent. And uh, again, another piece similar to the other one. And uh, just did some stenciling down the side. So this is a nice way to create a journal page, giving them, giving your recipient extra writing space, but also uh, decorating a page. And everything is very uh, relatively flat. So it doesn't take up a lot of bulk in your journal. Okay. So let's go ahead and make one of these. So first thing you want to do, and uh, my desk is well loved today, shall I say. There's lots of stuff all over the place, so everything should be easy to grab, no problem. But you're going to want to protect your work surface somehow, and I have this old, I think it's part of a, a bookkeeping record book. I just tore the cover off, and I use the in pa uh, inside pages for pages in my journal, but this makes a nice uh, place to spray. What you want to do is grab an envelope. So I'm going to grab an envelope and I've got a bunch right here. Okay, so this is a cream colored envelope and the size of this envelope is about um, four and a half by five and three quarters if anybody's curious, but you can use any size envelope, does not matter. I'm going to go ahead and seal the top of the envelope. All right, there we go. And I'm using art glitter glue. This is a wet white glue, a well-loved bottle, lasts a long time. It has a nice metal tip at the top. If you're looking for any of my uh, favorite products or tools, they'll be listed in my Amazon store below and uh, easy to find for you. If you click on the actual link to the Amazon store below, you'll be taken to the whole page where you can see everything at once with one click, all the pictures and everything. So, okay, there we go. We have a sealed envelope. Ta-da! Not very difficult so far, right? But let's go ahead and go a little further here. Okay, let us go ahead and put, uh, pick out a stencil and I've selected a stencil. Today I'm gonna to be using this butterfly stencil and I'm just going to put it on my uh, page like that. And now I'm going to be spraying it with some sort of inks. You can use um, uh, Distress Inks by, oops, that's Resist Spray. Let's see, Distress Spray Stains by, um, Tim Holt, or you can make your own. I use uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's inks and I put four or five dropperfuls in here and then fill the rest with water. And um, then I add a little bit of alcohol, like a drop, 
to uh, just make sure it doesn't go funky, uh, grow any fungus or anything like that. And I'll show you what those look like. Yeah, here they are. You see that? That's what they look like. They're expensive for a big bottle, but they last a very long time and they're very intense and uh, they're wonderful to play with if you like to work with bottled inks. Okay, I'm back. So I was going to play with a couple handmaids that I created here. Um, all right, so let's see how this one goes. Nothing too official here other than uh, spritzing. So let's see how we do here. Okay, just doing a lovely pinkish color here, pinky red, kind of a fuchsia. And this is a glimmer mist. And I fought with this bottle the other day. We'll see if it works today. I think it gets clogged easily. That's what the, the problem is. But um, anyway, if you've ever seen these in the stores, Tattered Angel Glimmer Mist. You can also make your own by breaking up a um, eyeshadow that has a lot of mica in it and uh, putting it in a bottle and mixing it around with some water and some um, a little bit of alcohol. And then you can make your own uh, glitter mist. So, oh, oh, it's working today. I must have cleared, cleared the deck. Okay, so now this is how not to waste your craft supplies because these things can be pricey and you want to absorb everything that you've used. Okay, so let's see what we have with the first initial pass. Okay, so now we have this little envelope, which is just adorable the way it is. And I'm going to put this aside to dry for a minute while I'm going to do the next step. I'm going to take this soaking wet stencil and I'm going to grab another envelope and I'm just going to grab a white one for right now. doesn't matter if I get a bluebird on. It's okay because I'm going to do this. Press it down and just give it a second to grab. And I'm going to absorb all that beautiful ink. Sometimes this one, this one actually comes out even prettier, I think. I just think that's so pretty. Okay, so now we have two envelopes out of one going. Let's try another one. Here's a small one. Now I'm going for whatever I can get at this point because uh, I've absorbed my major, uh, my major doodad. So now there's not much left on the stencil. I pretty much cleared that off. There might be some on the back of the stencil. Yep, I see some. So I'm going for more of a random hodgepodge, whatever I can get, kind of um, just picking up whatever's left over. You can also, also go around the edges of the work here and pick up some stuff this way. This way you get every little bit of it. You can do the tap maneuver. You can do the smush maneuver. Whatever you like. And you can even go back in here and spritz a little water and get a little bit more. So this is more of a random background design, but that can be used as a background. I could put a focal point on there and maybe ink around the edges. That would look really cool. So I'll put this aside for later and we'll use that another day. And uh, the one I'm going to use in this one is going to be this one. So I'm just going to give it a little blow dry so it's a little bit easier to cut, but I won't torture you with it. I'm just going to blow dry it with my heat gun. Here I go. Okay, I'm back and I'm all blow dried and happy as a clam. So here is how it came out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow, um, it's going to look like I'm going to follow the shape of uh, where this V is, but I'm not actually, I'm going to create my own. I'm going to follow one of the lines and then I'm going to make the second line my own. I'm going to follow this line, which is the line of the envelope flap that originally closed. I'm going to follow that down to the point and then I'm going to go from here up that way and that's going to give me the same cut. Now, uh, I'm going to use some scissors that are not so super uh, sharp on their own, but they work okay. They work well on one sheet of paper, but, but you try and give them any more than that, and it, sometimes it's a bit of a fight. So, as I dig for the scissors, okay, I found these. Oh, no, here they are. All right, so these are the Fiskar Paper Edgers, and they work great on a single sheet, like I said, but on uh, multiple sheets, not so good. So this is multiple sheets. So I'm going to try and uh, get through this, and we shall see how it goes. I'm checking to see that my scallops are going the right way. And I'm just going to make my V. Here I go. It's not too bad. It's kind of working with me this morning. It's very important to have dry paper. If it's wet at all, it'll just be very difficult. Okay, so that side's done. Now I want to turn the scissors over so my scallop will be going the same way or the opposite way on the other side. And I'm just going to do this. But now I'm going to head to this point right where I ended. 
I'm going to head there. I'm going to ignore this line and I'm going to head straight to that point. Actually, I need to start turning even a little more. There we go. And there it came out. So now I have this beautiful V shape on the top. I can save that and punch something out of that or do other fun things with that. We'll put that in the proverbial scrap pile. And uh, now I'm going to go around and ink it up on the corners. And let's say today I'm feeling very, very bold <laughs> and I'm going to use peeled paint distress ink. And I haven't used this color in a while. So I've, I've rummaged through and I pulled out a few other colors. And uh, it's kind of fun to use some of the other colors I don't normally use. So here we go. I've got my, my, my little thread here indicates my green dauber. So I'm going to ink away. I'm still standing up. I don't know why. <laughs> oh well. I'm so a little energy this morning. Okay, here we go. Do, 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 do. It's a lighter green, but it's kind of pretty. I may knock it back with a little bit of brown. We'll see. We'll see peel paint kind of more of the uh, lawn grass color I would say not a deep dark forest green but my forest green is getting a little bit dry so I'm going I'm going to other areas to find <laughs> ink again I've got lots of ink in the drawer I need to use what I have that's right shop at home shop at home folks shop at home shop at home first yeah okay I always have those uh, unused craft supplies that sit there and collect dust or we forget we have them. I have a uh, room full of closed little drawers and I can't see what's in them. And uh, that makes it a little hard to remember that I have stuff. So it's a good idea to clean out the craft door drawers every once in a while just so you refresh your brain on what you have or switch to clear drawers. That's a good idea too. Okay, so there we go. We have that. And I think that's kind of pretty. And I think I might accent it up just a smidge, just a smidge of with some walnut stain. And if you don't have these inks, you can always use makeup, eyeshadow. Um, you can try uh, putting down a little bit of uh, glue stick down and that'll help the eyeshadow grab. I'm just going to do this randomly, not everywhere, but maybe on the corners where this might have been handled, naturally handled, the middles and the corners. Okay, I think that's good. All right, so we have that now. And now it comes time to put a little bling on this little lovely. And let's see how we're gonna do that. Let me put my stencil over here. And actually that kind of shows up pretty good there. You can see it, okay. So I have some of this stuff I acquired along the way. And I think this might've come from the Dollar Tree. Don't quote me on that. Um, not 100% sure where this came from, but um, I think something like that. Okay. So let's just cut, let's say let's do four, and we'll do four, four little uh, crystals, and we'll just glue this down, and maybe for this I'm going to use the Art Glitter glue, it's a white wet glue. It does not have glitter in it, don't be fooled by the name, it's just a wet white glue that's extremely good, uh, works very well for uh, paper to paper. It will work on fabric to paper, but it's, it's best for paper to paper. Um, I find the fabric fix a little better for the fabric to paper. But of course, then you drop it and get glue all over the place. So that's okay because it dries clear. Yeah. <laughs> so we are a all a okay. We are a all right. <laughs> all right. Here we go. The second little piece and the little nub just makes it easy to apply. Sometimes this stuff is hard to find. Um, I put some links below in the Amazon store, but some, they felt sell out quickly. So I try and replace them with uh, when it becomes available again, I have to go find new links. So let me go and look again. And uh, but you can buy it, I'm sure, on Etsy or, um, you know, I don't know if they sell it in. I don't think I've never seen it myself in the uh, Michaels and, and um, Hobby Lobby and that, but they may sell it now. You never know. Worth a check. OK, have that. And then looking at my OK, so now I am going to take some doo -doo -doo, there it is liquid pearls in a color called brass and look okay i'm gonna sit now eagle is landing Boop, down all right very good so if you can't see just let me know i'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see what i'm doing here okay now if i just don't move that you should always be in frame all right so the liquid pearls is going to give you a raised 
surface. Let me show you what a raised surface of a liquid pearl looks like. We get a there. Can you see the little bumps? Little bumps? I don't know if you can see that. It's not focused. There, there. Okay, they're raised little bumps. They look like little flat back pearls on your paper, which makes it kind of cute. But here we go. Let's decorate this up any way you like. There's no right or wrong. I've got my glasses on. So you want to, the down up motion is what you want to do. Whoops. Sometimes you get a tail. If you get a tail, if you get in there quickly, you can wipe it off. Don't wait till it dries. Just get in there, down, up. Maybe go a little slower. I don't have to go that fast, Pam. All right, down, up, down, up, down, up. Once you get a hang of it, then you can start going a little faster. Okay. Stay in position. Should be staying in screen. Do do down up, 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 and down up. Okay. So um, and I can go around the outside a little bit too. So let me do just a little bit here. It's relatively quick. It's a nice way to add a little bit of bling. You can go super shiny sparkly or you can go do uh, more muted um, depending on the colors that you purchase. Okay, so this is a brass color, so it's not too in your face. Gives it that little look of little rivets or flat back pearls or something like that. Okay, so now I can also decorate my butterflies if I so choose. And let's say, oh, I'm going to be really crazy here. No, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to grab the liquid pearls again in... <laughs> Oh, okay, here. This one focuses nicely. Rose gold. There we go. Okay, I'll bring it in again. Okay, come on in. Okay, there you are. All right, let's go ahead and decorate this little lovely up. And it, really, it's totally up to you where you want to put these. I'm just going to accent some of the areas on the butterfly. It's going to be very subtle. And maybe here, here, and here. Here, here, here. There, there, there. There to there to there to there to there to there. This is just giving a little bit of texture, a little bit of color. Oop, I stuck my finger in something. I could feel it. Or the side of my hand. Yeah, the one thing about these is you do have to let them dry. The liquid pearls do dry faster than the stickles. Um, but I would say just kind of figure on setting everything aside for a couple of hours. Uh, to be absolutely sure. It won't take that long for the liquid pearls to dry, but if you use stickles, yeah, at least a few hours. Um, okay, maybe one more row there. I'm going to show you what we have so far. Okay, let me back out so we get a better focus. And we have this little guy all decorated up. Okay. And um, these bottles last a long time. I'm going to go ahead and close my glue as that's a good crafter habit to get into. And I've got the little ma uh, magnet here to hold extra pins. Very handy as well. Okay, so now I'm just going to put this over here for a second to dry. And then I'm going to create the paper that's going to go on the inside. And I have a cutoff of a, this is, um, uh, let me show you. I made this one for another project, but I have an leftover piece, which I think will go perfectly inside uh, this pocket. And now you're saying, well, you could fold it that way and, and that and tuck it in, but that I, I'd have to do multiple folds. Or I could do an up seat, like a, um, like a car trunk fold like this, where it goes up. And if I do that, and I make one side even, all the magic will happen. I just have to pull out my prototype again without sticking my finger in it, in the stickles. Okay, come on back over here. All right. So I need to know how wide it needs to be. And oh. Oh. I, I sometimes I half clean up, so I put away my pencil. Okay, here's my pencil. Um, so I'm just going to make a mark. I want it to maybe slide in about there on this side and maybe to about there on this side. So I'm just going to go ahead and guillotine cut that sliver off so it's nice and straight. Okay, so now this is going to sit very nicely inside this pocket. So let me put the pocket aside to dry again. 
and I can do a few fancy things on the this page. I'm going to round the edges with the corner chomper, the crocodile corner chomper. And uh, now I'm just going to ink around the edges to make it look a little bit more distressed. Do, 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 do. I always, I don't know, sing these old movie songs or whatever they are. Oh, probably dating myself. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, here we go. Everybody, anybody remember Matt Helm movies? It was Dean Martin used to play this character, Matt Helm. I think he was a like a spy detective. It was almost like a James Bond character, but oh, I used to love those movies. Matt Helm movies. Even my husband remembers them. And he was... He was born in Germany, but they used to watch Matt Helm movies when he was growing up. We're both in our 50s and mid-50s, and uh, I guess that was our time. <laughs> it was so much fun. I remember he had, was it him? I think so. He had this big round bed, and uh, for him to get ready and spy, spy uh, specialness, um, ha half of the bed started to raise up, and he would slide out from under the sheets into a giant swimming pool, which was, I guess, supposed to be his bathtub. And... Uh, <laughs> It's just so funny to think about. Uh, that's how he used to get ready, Matt Helm. Oh, that little devil. Okay, <laughs> so much fun. All right, so we are done the inking. Now we could, we should probably ink the inside just a little bit. Okay, and now let's just run around the outside to be complete. I'll do some cheater inking. Cheater, cheater, total cheater inking, just to make it quick. And down here, and down here, and around the corner, and uh, maybe blend it in a little bit. Um, we'll soften it around the edges. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. Doo -doo. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of stamping on the inside of this one. Soft colored stamping. And uh, maybe I'll use this stamp. Oh, it's got some writing on it. And I think I'm going to grab a very pale um, brown. <laughs> See what else I have in my my ink drawer. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's some never used colors. Okay, what on earth are you? Antique linen. Yeah, I used to use you a lot a while ago, but I don't use you so much. So this is going to be like a, oh, let's hope it's still wet. Okay, kind of like a vanilla. Well, we'll see what we get. What do we got? Okay, it's just barely there, and that's exactly what I want because I want this to be a writing space for somebody to come over be able to write on top of it. I don't know if you, you probably can't even see that. Let me put you closer. And this is what it's looking like. It's just barely there. So yeah, this one is, if you're looking for it, antique linen. Okay. Um, I just I get more on all at the same time. How about that? More on. <laughs> Am I talking to myself? Probably. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, you don't really have to push hard. Just going around and dab around these these words to give it some background, so it's just not so stark white, you know. And actually, you can mix the colors too. You don't just have to go with one color. You can go with different colors. Oh, here's one I rarely use, but I think it's sort of pr pretty. This is spun sugar. I think this one. Oh, looks kind of juicy. Let's see what happens. All right. Can we get anything? Oh yeah, a little bit. It's like a faint pink. Okay, I'll just put a little faint pink on there too to add a little interest. And I'll show you this to you more closely in a second here. So you can get a different uh, way of using this stuff. Okay, let's go up a little closer here so you can see too. See, so now there's some writing with pink and a little bit with uh, the an antique linen and the spun sugar. And that's going to be our backdrop for some beautiful writing things. And I think I put a word or something in here. What is this? What is this? Okay, this is a letter stamp. It's a sta it's it's has the word letter and the definition of a, of a letter, I guess. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this in there. I should probably use. Whoops, is that the right one? Antique linen. Oh no, see, I wanted the brown. Oh, don't change the lids. That's another disastrous thing that can happen. Um, I've done that more times than I can count. Um, make sure you keep the right lid with the right ink pad or you'll have a very adventurous day. I'm going to put this here in the middle. Squish. There we go. And lift. Oh, that came out kind of nice. Okay. So we have something that looks like 
that, a little uh, dictionary definition. Um, I got those on Etsy somewhere, and I will um, do my best to put the link down below. And uh, um, I just really enjoyed those. Um, I have no affiliation with the person who makes them other than I was very happy when I found them and I bought them and I was happy and that was it. So <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. We have that. Now I was going to put a little tail, a little tabby tail on that one. And let's see, I have this stuff here. It's a pinky thing. So maybe I'll do a little bit of a, I have this um, dyed. Oh, this is kind of cute. Maybe I could put that on there. I could use this. Yeah, that's kind of cute. But actually, let me show you how I made the other one. Okay. So I just took a piece of, uh, this is seam binding. And what I did was uh, I just kind of went back and forth and back and then forth a few times. Doesn't have to be a lot. I don't think I need all that. And then I just put it under my sewing machine and ran across it. Let me do that. Okay, so I just sewed across that, just a straight stitch back and forth, very easy. And uh, I'm just going to glue it on here. So I, for this is going fabric to paper, so I'm going to use Fabrifix, a uh, fast dry um, uh, silicone glue, clear silicone glue. Works great fabric to fabric or fabric to paper. It's a very strong, very fast grab. So I'm just going to stick that there. Give it a few seconds to grab. All right, that should be pretty fast. So this works kind of like a, um, a hot glue, except it's not hot. Kind of that concept, if you remember hot glue guns and hot glue and, you know, burning our fingers and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and put this in a book so you can get an idea of what that looks like. Let me grab. Let me grab a book. Okay. Here's a book. Now let's, let's move this because it might have some residual ink on it. I don't want to ink up my book. Okay. All right. Now let's find a page that this would look pretty on. All right. Here's the, here is, well, let me back up a bit so you can see. Okay. There we go. Um, that would look pretty on the pink, wouldn't it? Well, it kind of looks nice on this little envelope or it's a little clip fold there. And complimentary pink on pink, or should we go contrasting? Kind of like the pink on pink. Got a lot there. I could do it on yellow. So you can see what the page design looks like on different pages. See how it pops. Try it on for size. This is a nice white one. That looks nice. That's kind of cool. All right, I think I might do this one. I don't know. I'm just feeling that might be the one to do. Now, I want to be very careful. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and grab here because there's no liquid pearls there. And I'm going to glue down this side and glue down this side. And I am going to use some Fabrifix because it's a good strong glue. It'll grab fast. You can use the wet white glue here as well, the art glitter glue. Any any white glue that you have will work. Um, but I'm just going to do this because it's right here. And I know it's going to grab fast for me. All right, here we go. All right. I think I need to clear my end. Whoops. Yep, I just stuck my finger in one of them. Uh-huh. See that? There, there it is right there. Yep. Hopefully it's not too much of a disaster and we can, we can work around it. All right, again, I will try and stay very still, quiet. No, that's not possible. All right, here we go. Here comes a little tiny stream. Skip that part and finish there. Okay, now it's going to be a little tricky getting it to stay because I can't squeeze too many spots, but here we go. We're going in. All right, down. And I can push there and I can push there and I can push there. So you want to make sure you get, you get those tips down and get those tips down. Maybe I will come along and oops, push from the back. There we go. All right. So that as that is adhering, I'm just going to give that a second or two to grab. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this little guy in place. Let's hope that has grabbed. Okay. And let's see if I can snuggle this guy in here so you can get an idea of what he looks like. Trying not to touch the stickles or those, the liquid pearls. Okay, and I'm in there. Okay, sliding in. Just have to get past that little middle part. Am I in? Nope, what's going on? All right, let me look. Looking. Okay, let me check with my bone folder, make sure my opening is all open. 
Yes, everything is open. All the way. It's open all the way. Okay, should be able to go in here. Theory says it. Let's see if she can do it. Okay. All right. What's going on? <laughs> Something's going on there. Oh, maybe the back piece is going behind it. I think that's what might be happening. Okay, so grabbing these two together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's what was happening. I'm pretty sure. Okay, there we go. You want to go in between the two envelope pieces there. It's easier to do when it's dry. There we go. See, it slides right in and out. Okay, there. Much easier. Okay, so I will make sure this is all perfectly tacked down at the end. But there you go. That's what it looks like. Upon completion, you have your envelope, a uh, uh, little uh, one big V cut in an envelope with a pretty uh, stencil spray design that you can do with many different sprays. You can also use watercolor and all sorts of things to uh, spray. If you put a chunk of inexpensive watercolor paint into a bottle, it will dissolve and then you'll have a nice spray ink, uh, spray paint. So that will work as well. Although it might get clogged a little bit, you might have to clean the nozzle every once in a while. So um, if you enjoyed this video, please, um, uh, and you would like to be notified whenever I put out a new video, just uh, click the notification bell beside the subscribe uh, button down below on the right. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Make sure to check out your uh, free checklist and uh, note from the bookmaker. There's a link down below in the drop down uh, description box below the video. Also check out my new vintage uh, digital printable kits I have uh, set up in my Etsy store. There's lots of different ones to pick from. So if you love the old papers but have a hard time finding them or you find that they're too expensive when you find them, this is a great place to uh, check some out. Um, I also have a link to my Amazon store below if you want to just do one click and see everything that I offer in there or that I use that are my favorite tools and supplies. Check that out or you can click on some of the individual links below. Um, also, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and my podcasts are uh, go live on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and my podcasts are uh, new content, new information that is not found on my videos, so if you'd like to even immerse yourself more in the junk journal world, come out and have a listen. I love hanging out with you guys. Um, if you want to follow my playlists, um, those are collections of videos that follow certain topics like using up book pages or junk journal construction or uh, journal page layout ideas, etc. Or you can see my junk journal flip throughs, things like that. They're located down below. They're on my, <clears throat> excuse me, on my YouTube channel. And there are also a few linked at the end of the video. You can also find me on Instagram, Etsy, Pinterest, Twitter, and LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and check out our very fun Facebook group with its weekly and monthly challenges. It's free to join. We'd love to have you. And remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Till next time. See you. Bye.